the main event will feature Jake, the problem child, Paul, taking on Tyron, the chosen one, Woodley, in an eight-round cruiserweight bout. Now, it will be fought at a catch weight. They've agreed on a 190-pound weight limit. It will also be coupled with another high-stakes championship fight because you're going to have the unified champion, pound for pound, one of the best fighters in the world, Amanda Serrano, uh, taking on Yamilith, another champion, in Yamilith Mercado. The event being brought to you by Most Valuable Promotions, Showtime Pay-Per-View, and, of course, the pay-per-view telecast is going to begin at a special time. We're going to do it at 8 p.m. Eastern. That is 5 o'clock Pacific time. And, of course, it's going to be produced. It's going to be distributed by Showtime pay-per-view. Now, tickets uh, for this live event will be available for purchase, and they go on sale next week, Thursday, July 22nd, at rocketmortgagefieldhouse.com. Again, Thursday, July 22nd, at rocketmortgagefieldhouse.com. I like to call him boxing's best friend. He is without doubt one of the coolest, most innovative uh, cats in this business. He is the president, he's the GM of Showtime Sports, Mr. Steven Espinoza. Thank you, thank you, Brian. For over 35 years, Showtime has been the network for high-quality, big-time combat sports events. From the most promising young prospects to boxing's most accomplished champions to quite literally the biggest pay-per-views in sports history to the highest quality, most exciting MMA, we bring it all to you. And as Brian mentioned, our current schedule is a great proof of that. This Saturday, Jamel Charlo goes to hopefully make history in becoming the first undisputed four belt champion in the super welterweight division against a very tough Brian Castaño. Next week, the 20th anniversary of Showbox, the unique franchise, Showtime's unique groundbreaking series. It's the only series in boxing that identifies and develops young champions year after year. And then July 31, right here in LA at the Forum, Bellator's biggest fight ever, Patricio Pitbull versus AJ McKee, the featherweight world champion, the Grand Prix, world Ch the Grand Prix championship, and of course, the $1 million bonus. And that's all just in the next two weeks. So as you see, Showtime Sports covers every aspect of combat sports. This isn't a trend, it's not a fad. This is who we are. We are the home of premier combat sports, and that's why this event is on Showtime pay-per-view. August 29th is certainly no exception. In just three fights, Jake Paul has become the talk of boxing and of combat sports. Uh, you know, people ask me repeatedly, you know, why did we become involved in this? What is it that, that got us involved? You know, and, and my response is, look, we weren't the first ones to the party here, but we do recognize a good party when we see one. And the reality, what Jake has done in his thirst, first three fights is unprecedented in combat sports. No one has generated this kind of attention in three fights, in just the first three fights of their career. Uh, the commitment that Jake has made, and you've seen it already, is that he, he respects the sport, he takes it seriously, and he is committed to fighting tougher opponents with each fight, and you see that. He is progressing with each fight, and I promise you that will continue to happen going forward. As for Tyron Woodley, well, we know exactly what to expect from him. Strike force fighter, appeared nine times on Showtime. He's a five-time UFC world champion. 14 of his 19 wins were by TKO or submission. He is an elite combat sports athlete. This is an intriguing matchup, a true 50-50. If anyone tells you they know how this fight is gonna go, they're lying. Because this is the epitome of a 50-50 fight. 
And with that intriguing main event, we're going to surround it with high quality boxing matches. We have a couple of the fighters here today in one of our featured prelim fights. You know, Showtime is proud of its history in women's combat sports, both boxing and MMA. We've had Amanda Serrano on Showtime before, and we're proud to welcome her uh, back to the network. She is, without question, one of the best pound-for-pound -pound female fighters on the planet, possibly the best pound-for-pound. And she is one of the most exciting fighters, male or female, in the sport. A prolific knockout artist. She's got her work cut out from her. A champion in her own right, Yamalith Mercado, brings her own title history, her own belt into this. She is moving up four pounds in this for an, another installment of the classic Puerto Rico versus Mexico matchup. We will have two more fights for the pay-per-view card, which will be announced very shortly. They will be competitive boxing cards. This is not a novelty. This is not an exhibition. This is real boxing. This is a competitive sporting event, and it is something that you should not miss. We thank our partners, Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse and Barstool Sportsbook, and we will see you all on August 29th. Get ready to come out here now. She is a world champion. She comes fighting out of Chihuahua, Mexico. And you want to talk about a woman who has reign. Well, she's been a champion now for two years. The WBC Super Bantamweight Champion, 18-2, five knockouts. She's coming up four pounds to compete against Amanda Serrano. Here is Yamileth Mercado. She goes by Yami, the WBC Super Bantamweight Champion. And she'll be facing a woman who comes in at 41 and 1, 30 knockouts. She is the WBC, the WBO, the IBO world champion. She's held titles in seven different weight divisions, more than any female fighter in history. She is the unified featherweight champion of the world. She is known as the real deal, Amanda Serrano. The fighting pride of Puerto Rico. So ladies, let's talk about this fight that's going down on August 29th. And Amanda, I'll start with you. You know, here you again, another challenge, another champion. Uh, let the people know your thoughts on facing Mercado on August 29th. What should we expect? Well, first, I really want to thank Yami for taking up um, the fight. She's a real Mexican champion. That's why you call it Mex a real Mexican champion coming up to fight me. Not too many want to, but um, thank you, Yami, para, para te pelea. Uh, thank Showtime for having me and, and Lou DeBella for, putting, um, for fighting for me. But it's going to be a great fight. Uh, there's never a boring night when it's Mexican versus Puerto Rico. So I guarantee you it's going to be a night of fireworks. Yami, Amanda, pound for pound, one of the best fighters in the world. She has, if you look at her last five fights, she stopped four of them. Tell us why you believe not only that you can win this fight, considering you're coming up in weight and fighting against a, a power puncher in Amanda Serrano. Yamilet, ¿por qué crees que le puedes ganar a Amanda Serrano subiendo una división si viene de noquear a sus últimas cuatro rivales y es alguien que, que es una peleadora de poder? Yo creo que estoy muy agradecida por la oportunidad. 
y siento que soy la nueva generación del boxeo, que soy una peleadora fuerte, que cada vez va aprendiendo y que tengo mucha hambre por coronarme en esta división nueva, eh, experimentar en la categoría de los plumas y sé que va a ser una guerra y que los verdaderos ganadores pues van a ser el público. I'm very excited and first of all very thankful for the opportunity. Uh, I think uh, I'm a new genera generation of fighters and uh, I'm very uh, blessed to fight here uh, at this and with Amanda and uh, we want to fight in the featherweight division and uh, I'm very strong and ready for this. Yami, will your power carry to 126? Que si tu poder va a poderse ver bien en peso pluma. Yo creo que sí, no es la primera pelea que he realizado en peso pluma. Mis inicios fueron en esa categoría, entonces me siento contenta y muy fuerte para esta pelea. I started my, my career in this weight class, uh, then went down, and I'm very happy to come back to this weight class. So I'll, I'll be good there. Amanda, let me ask you straight out. You look at some of these rankings, got you number three, some number two. Pound for pound, you talk about female fighters. Are you pound for pound number one, the best female fighter in the world right now? Well, I'm the best that I can be, and I want to continue to be the best. But it's an honor to be on that list, being anywhere in the top three. There's great fighters. Um, you have Olympic gold medalists up there. I've only had nine amateur fights, so it's, uh, it's an honor to be up there. But um, it's a matter of opinions, and I'm going to continue to fight. And to me and my team and to my island, Puerto Rico, I'm number one. So. I'm happy there. We'll wrap it up with this. What can you guarantee the people on August 29th when they tune in to Showtime pay-per-view that they're going to see when you step in the ring against a champion like yeah. Mercado? August 29th, you're going to see nothing but fireworks. You know, I always bring on, uh, bring a great, great show. Um, great. I always look great with my great outfit. <laughs> and, uh, Mexican Puerto Rico, you're never, you're never going to have a, a, a dull night with us. And I think Jake Paul and Woodley are going to have um, competition. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Yami, same question. What can you guarantee that the people are going to get when they tune in and watch you fight Amanda Serrano on August 29th? ¿Qué garantizas que va a pasar esa noche eh, el día de la pelea? Yo creo que garantizo una guerra entre dos campeonas, diferente división, pero una guerra entre, en la que las dos queremos ganar, que nos levanten la mano y que nos cataloguen como una de las mejores libra por libra del mundo y que esa noche pues, el boxeo femenil se va a robar totalmente eh, los, los reflectores hacia nosotras y van a reconocer que esto es la calidad en el boxeo. Uh, it's going to be a war. Uh, it's going to be a very fun night. And we're going to bring it all, all in. And uh, yeah, the ladies are going to take the show that night. Uh, and it's going to be a great night. Love it. One of the co-features that you're going to see on August 29th. Let's get to the other co-feature in the main event. And let me introduce a man who on August 29th on Showtime pay-per-view will be making his boxing debut. But he is no stranger to throwing hands. He's known as one of the hardest punchers in UFC history. He is the former UFC welterweight champion of the world. He's known as the chosen one. Ladies and gents, Tyron Woodley. Went 19, seven and one in his career, nine, six and one in the UFC, making his boxing debut on August 29th, the chosen one. And the man he will be facing. He'll be coming back home to the Buckeye State in his hometown of Cleveland, Ohio. It'll be his fourth professional fight. He has knocked out all three of his opponents that he's faced thus far. This man.
you know, Jake, I'll, I'll start with you because you guys, you know, had a private photo shoot. You know, there was no media there. Um, but in that private photo shoot, you guys had a chance to, you know, kind of face off, look at it one another. And in that photo shoot, you said during the face off, quote, I saw it in his eyes. I saw it deep in his soul that he knew this right hand was going to crack him in his skull. You still stand by that? Yeah, look, I saw, I saw fear in his eyes. I saw a man who just accepted a fight mostly for a paycheck. I saw a man who doesn't really have fight left in him. I saw a man who's been defeated multiple times now and who will be finished and sent into retirement by YouTube Disney star boxer. Keyword, you saw a man. Something you're not, you're a problem child. That's what you saw. You haven't even been in front of enough people to know what to, to judge your face off from. My sparring partners will finish you. We'll, we'll see, you know. I but mean, nice watch, though. We'll, we'll see what happens, you know. I, I think uh, I think your your career is over, man. I know. You, you think you, I know. It's two different I'm, things. I'm, I'm going to bounce your brain off of your skull. Instant concussion, you will be on the mat. You're, you're, you're just not the same Tyrone anymore. I never was Tyrone, number one. Number two, everything you just scripted and wrote and practiced in the mirror, you shaking while you're even saying it. Like, this is a fight. This ain't fucking for play play. This for real. Tyrone, let me ask you this. Let me follow up on that. Because you told the boxing scene, you're going to knock Jake out in three rounds. Say a quote, they're gassing him up. You've got power. He's old. He ain't won a fight in a million years. You're the hung more hungry, younger guy. You're taking, taking me lightly. Think you can beat me up? They're lying to this kid. I'm going to F him up. You still stand by that? I mean, look at my resume. Look at all the up-and-coming fighters, the Darren Tills, the Kevin Gastelums, the one that gassed up and they gave false hope that they can get the job done. And watch what happened. None of them landed a punch. So him being athletic, him having a right hand, him getting everybody either wanting him to. So many people come up to me on a day-to-day -day basis. You got to knock him the fuck out. I'm like, damn, what this dude did to everybody? He got people wanting to watch him. And that's why we're sitting here right now. That, that's the exact pressure that's going to crack you on fight night. This the pressure's going to be on you, you have, brother. You have, you have never been in a fight like this. And Ever, you know right? that the whole MMA community Robbie is Lawler, counting Carlos on Condit, you. Robbie Lawler, Carlos Condit, Darren I've never been in a never, fight like this. Don't know who the fuck those guys are. Exactly. You, you've never famers. been on a fight of this scale. The Hall of you've never Pick been on a fight of You've never Go been, you've over never been on a fame. fight of this scale, which is why this is the biggest payday of your life. And you know that the whole MMA community is counting on you to knock me out and to beat me. I'm if, when you when me. you when you lost to Kamara, I got Usman, one person counting. When you me. lost to me. Gilbert Burns, when you lost to all of those guys, you had built-in excuses. When, oh, when they have were the you best. fought anybody? Oh, of that they caliber. were the best. What happens when you lose to when Jake Paul? When have you fought anybody? What happens of that when caliber? you lose to Jake Paul? You're going to be the laughing stock of the internet. When have you fought anybody? Just like of that I just caliber. like I turned Nate Robinson into a floor mat, I'm going to turn you into fucking. Pace. Nate Robinson plays basketball. He shoot three points and slam dunk. Hey Jake, I knock people out for a living. Is this the toughest fight when you look at the three that you fought? Tyron Woodley, toughest fight thus far? Toughest by far. And, and that's exactly what I want. I want to continue to increase my opponent's, you know, skill level. I want to challenge myself. This is a legitimate knockout artist. Level? This is a legitimate knockout artist. You know, he, he was boxing while, while I was on Disney Channel. You know, he's been boxing probably four or five times as long as me. But August 29th, Cleveland, Ohio... In my hometown, you, you will see a boxing clinic be put on. And this man doesn't go more than three rounds. Tyron, you know, one of the things we saw on social media is that you show some pictures of you training with Floyd Mayweather. Um, can you tell us how those sessions went? And did he give you maybe some, some tricks that we will see on August 29th? I mean, to get an opportunity to work out with Floyd Mayweather, an idiot would not take that advantage of that situation. He showed me stuff, not specifically to defeat Jake, but to be a world-class boxer in general. Techniques, positions, placements, hand positioning, movements. Um, in MMA, sometimes we waste energy. Sometimes we 
do a lot of shucking and jiving, and they don't have purpose. Everything I do, everything I throw is going to hurt. My faints are going to hurt. It's going to make his body shake to the point where he don't know what the fuck's going on. So you can say, a mouth to say anything. I'm from the show me state. You got to show me. I've been in there. This ain't my first big stage. I was at the sold out Madison Square Garden with the fight of the night. The biggest gate they've ever had in history. The best card in UFC history. I was a fighter tonight. That's not true. The biggest gate was last weekend in Vegas. but The biggest um, gate of Madison Square Garden. Listen to what I say, young man. So how is Floyd Mayweather going to teach you to beat me when he couldn't even finish my brother? You Just are talk about Floyd money Mayweather. and just talk about clout. Because when we talk about fighting, you shouldn't even be talking in the same sentences with me. I mean, we can talk. I'm a Hall of Fame already. And I'm going to make history bouncing your head off the mat. Now what? Well, we, we can talk about fighting. I mean, if you want, if you want to dive into it, I mean, what, what can, look, look, look at your coaches. We, Who what, is your coach? Is it Pedro Diaz? To? Is it Eric Brown? Is it Floyd Mayweather? You're bouncing around coaches like you do baby mamas. How many kids you got now? You're a 39 Gang year old man who's pulling out games weak. You know get your funny? shit together, bro. You know what's funny? You got on get all your this, shit together, you, you bro. You look like a rap video. Uh, all Tell of me this, somebody all in your this, neighborhood that dressed like that. I'm going fishing. Tell me after somebody this. in your neighborhood that dressed like that. I'm going fishing. Tyron, I am coach. You, how you, about this? You want to be People a rapper? Rap about what I you, live. You want to? You, My you want to be cohesive. a rapper? You the have multiple songs on Easter. Spotify that fucking suck with two streams, brother. Brother, you're 39 you years old trying to become a rapper. Are you serious? You're trying to become a rapper. Have you saw Here's yourself? How about this? Pull your hair all back of the money that, all, of the, all of the money, all of the money, all of the money that, that you're eating you from beat. this fight is going to your baby pull, mamas. Pull your you hair bought, back. You bought a used Bentley. You, you know I what's seen funny? it on your Instagram. You, you bought a used funny? Bentley my with your money. My biggest flex is my kid. You bought a used Bentley That's with his money. That's my biggest flex. I think, the, but these guys want to so hear about. So you actually thank you guys. They want to hear about the fight. Instagram covering up the steering wheel so you can't see how many miles is on it. He's like. Bro, just got this Ocean Auto what, Club what, what, used, what talk, used luxury we car dealership. We talking about fighting? Yeah, let's talk used. about fighting. I'm talking well, about how what? you're used. Let's talk about bitch. used Bentley, used bitch, and guess what? You're gonna pay for those words, brother. So let me ask you this, Ty I, Tyron. I, by let the me, way, let, I'm not gonna pay. I'm paying plugs, you. Hey, plugs, I'm paying plugs you. Plugs get pulled for that word. You're gonna find out. So let's okay, we'll find out. How about this? Okay, we'll rapper, Tyron. I'm culture. I can talk about culture. A lot of I'm what they rap about. A lot of people have written because they, they go back to your UFC record and they say, well, he, he's lost his last four. He even lost his last fight, obviously, in the octagon. Does he still have enough left in the tank? Can you answer that? Jake, meet me in Sparring tonight. Let's get a warm-up in. I, I guarantee you when you leave the gym, you would never fucking walk in that ring with me, ever. If you really want to see, if we're a fighter, if it's all about money or if it's all about clout, meet me at the gym today. Jake... It, you, you, Jake, you are it, stupid as fuck. Holla at your boy. Let me ask you this. And watch you, what happens. If you, you win this fight. When? And, if, and, and obviously you've knocked out everybody you, you face. If you stop him, what should they be saying about Jake Paul as a fighter? I think they're already saying it, man. I think, I think the secret's out of the bag. Look, I'm sparring some of the best fighters in the world. Andrew Tabidi, Jean Pascal, Jay Leon Love, Rob Safar, Ahmed Ely Bailey. Like the list, the list goes He's on. He's pouring thoughts. And, and, and when I knock out Tyrone, I think I think people will be like, "Wow, this 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 kid is uh, he's the real he's the real deal." Like Amanda Serrano out, out here. We were just training last night. She has one of the highest knockout rates for female boxers ever. About to beat the record. And we just like have that same mentality. I, I'm a, I'm a real killer. I, I'm I'm gonna take Tyrone into deep waters and drown him. And this is this is my make or break fight. People are wanting to see me lose. You know, the, the, the MMA community wants to see Jake Paul fall. They're counting on Tyrone, but he's just not going to get the job done. So I know there are members of the media who want to ask him questions. We'll end it with this. We'll start with you, Tyrone. What can you guarantee people when they pay their money for Showtime pay-per-view on August 29th to see you fight Jake Paul? What can you guarantee you that they're going to get on August 29th? Violence. Jake, same question. I mean, people people know what they get when you're tuning into a Jake Paul event. That's All why. Times, that's why. That's times. why as I'm the most impactful three and boxer in history. No fighter has ever accomplished what I've accomplished in three fights. And people can say I didn't earn it. People will say I don't deserve it. But I'm earning more than any fighter have, has ever earned three fights in. And people know what what they get when they tune into a Jake Paul show. I'm knocking this guy out. That's what people want to see. 
and, and we're putting on a show. How are you going to do it? And I don't think that. I don't think he don't deserve it. I think what he's doing is trying to, I'm a Disney, I'm a vlogger, and I'm fighting this seasoned veteran UFC champion. It's all, it's all just in case. It's a backup excuse for when I wax you in that, in that ring. That's what it is. He a fighter. This is going to look like a fight. It's a lot of fights that's taking place that people are like, oh, this is bad for the sport. This is, will look like a fight. It's not going, I'm not just going to walk out there and swing two punches and everybody think I'm going to knock him out in two minutes. This is a real fucking fight. I'm training like I'm fighting Mike Tyson. I want y'all to really know that. So don't, don't, don't fall for the BS. Oh, I'm Disney. Oh, this is the, the. No, this is a fight. You want to fight me? You sign the line. It's war. We got members of the media. I know you guys have questions. We're going to pass the mic to you. Just make sure that you introduce yourself. Let us know who you're representing. Questions? Right here in front with the hat. Jake, what happened to the Connor chain? And are you planning a chain for this fight? Yeah, so uh, the, the Connor chain is back at home right now, but uh, Dustin Poirier sent me over his address. So we're getting that over to him, and uh, I think he's going to auction it off for charity. So people are going to be, someone's going to be able to get the notorious Connor McGregor, Sleepy McGregor chain. Before you answer the next question, Jake, you, you had initially offered Conor McGregor $50 million. Then after the loss, you said $23 million. Do you still want to fight Conor McGregor even after the loss? You know, I, I think it could happen, right? I think, I think the, the funny thing about this journey is I, I've predicted, you know, everything that has happened thus far. 18 months ago when I said I wanted to fight Conor, people laughed at me. Now I'm laughing at Conor with a broken ankle sitting there in the octagon, and he needs Jake Paul more than more than I need him. So yeah, my offer, my offer to Connor is, is $23. And if we ever fought, I, I, w I would knock those fake ass teeth right out of his fucking mouth. You know, Dustin Poirier defeated this man. And Dustin Poirier is an amazing fighter, don't get me wrong, an amazing guy. I, I actually became a fan of him, his over the weekend. But he, you know, he's 5'9", 155 pounds. I'm 6'1", 200. And so Conor McGregor, would not stand a chance. Julie? Hi, I'm Victoria Venon for Ring TV, and I just want to know if you um, do win this fight, what do you plan to gain from it, and who would you like to um, fight next? Uh, when I win this fight, I, I plan to gain a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> and look, the, the price in the stock just keeps on going up. Showtime pay-per-views. And I, I, uh, I think there's a long list of people. You know, but it, it just, it's just figuring out who's active and who makes the most sense. And me and my team will make that decision when the time is right. Okay, and that's awesome. And what, um, what advantages do you think your opponent has over you? None. I love it. Thank you. Tyron, could you answer that too? It, you victorious? Another fight? In the, boxing? Of course. I didn't, I didn't get into this for a quick payday to get in and get out. Um, this is, a stepping, this is a stepping stone for me. This is my entry into boxing, for sure. So for me, um, I'm not going to say nothing because he's a damn lie because he know good and well I knock him out. But at the end of the day, when I look at him, I look at a kid that I really don't have nothing to lose. I look at power. I'm not going to act like he doesn't have power. But anybody that had power, the brawlers, the Robbie Lawlers, the people that really possess the ability to possibly shut your lights out, them the ones that made me train the hardest. So I look Robbie, forward to it. Robbie Lawler, you know, that was a discussion going into my Ben Askren fight. Robbie Lawler couldn't knock out Ben Askren. Robbie Lawler's a beast. Robbie Lawler couldn't knock out Ben Askren. We're talking about me. One you know, minute, I'm not, I'm 59 to, seconds, I'm I finished your best Robbie friend, Butt Sorry. Buddy. I'm not trying to gas Robbie Lawler, by the way. Yep. In the blue? Tyron Woodley. Uh, this is Muhammad Mubarak. I'm with the Electronic Urban Report. What do you plan to do after this fight? in boxing, you plan to continue to fight in the world of boxing or do you want to go back to what you've done before? I plan to continue to um, fight in boxing, to be honest. Um, it's not gonna hurt me to focus just on striking, focus on my positioning, 
focus on my punching, my defense, my counters, and just being mobile, just with your hands alone. So when I fight a mixed martial art fight, I think I'm gonna go into to the fight with more tools and be sharper. So um, one thing that we do too many times, I know it's dope for you guys to hear, yeah, I wanna hear predictions, but when you think too far beyond the fight that's in front of you, that's when the shit goes the other direction. So for me, this is, this is the biggest fight of my life because it's the next fight. Jake. Lance? Yeah, hey, hey Jake, I wanted to ask you, I mean, when Tyron is talking like this, is that what you actually wanted? I mean, you wanted an opponent like this who's going to test you, who is a bigger, bigger puncher than the previous guys you fought, correct? Yeah, I love it. Uh, I haven't been hit in three fights. It's a fact. Yo, that's going to get hit in this fight. I, I, I haven't been hit in the face. Um, so as a professional boxer, that's sort of unheard of. And I, I just want to add some experience uh, to, my, to my belt. Look, I want to go after Canelo in three years. I want to be a world champion. And so if I'm just fighting guys who can't hit me, you know, how, how am I going to get better in the ring under those lights and get that experience? So Tyrone's the perfect person to maybe get me to the third round for the first time ever. Hey, can you take this cup from me? Uh, okay. Because you standing there looking real silly for no reason. Just in the hat. David Avila, a uh, question for Amanda Serrano. Uh, Amanda, how surprised were you that it, that you weren't able to get another featherweight uh, titles to compete against you and had to go to super featherweight? Well, I wasn't surprised at all. I mean, we've been gunning for the champions at that weight for a couple of months, about a year now, when I decided I wanted to become undisputed champion. I mean, it's definitely still my goal when they still in my sight. And um, yeah, but I'm just super honored that I'm able to fight again. <laughs> even, if it's, even if it's against another champion, it doesn't matter. But yeah, hopefully we can get those fights soon. Yes. Uh, Giandra LaBeouf, Boxing Insider. Tyron, he mentioned that he didn't know any of your previous fights. If you had to pick two or three of your fights to introduce Jake to what type of fighter you are, which of your three past fights would you tell him he needs to watch to really know who you are? I mean, Jake's a fan, so he knows all of my fights. He's played me on a UFC video game, and, um, you know, he's just saying that because I don't, I don't because even own an Xbox. He says, he says that because it sounds cool to, uh, to, to, to basically try to discredit the person to the side. But at the end of the day, he's talking about a career. Okay, I have a career. And I had a career before Keyword it was had. even legal. You know, I was a what? Keyword had. Okay. Um, Back to intellectual conversation. Um, For sure, bro. He, he literally recognizes what I'm possible. He just said I'm a seasoned striker. How would you know that I'm a seasoned striker without watching me? He just took somebody's word for it? No, he watched me. And he's going to watch me punch him right in the face. And he's going to look in his corner. He's going to look at his coaches and be like, you lied to me. You told me I can beat him. You told me he was old. You told me he was washed up. That, that is actually not what they tell me. They say this is the biggest challenge, and every single day they say this is a serious fighter. They should have told you lot, a suicide. There's a lot, if they there's was a lot on the line here. This is a high risk fight, but they tell me, Jake, you will beat him and you will KO him. They, they're not. They're not sitting here fluffing my feathers. Okay, like I, I have the best team, one of the best boxing teams I have ever seen in the world. It's Patriots, Bill Belichick, many. Bulls, 96, 97, Team Problem Child. They're, they're not here gassing is, me up. People think I have what? yes men. People think I have weird people around me telling me shit. That's, no, that's not the case, buddy. Well, that's why I don't think. We I don't, are I don't very think seriously. what he has. We are, we are taking you very seriously, but anything that you bring to the ring, it just won't matter. Three up. rounds. Hi, Jake. Adriana Stay. Jimenez with Fino Boxing. Um, a few weeks ago, you mentioned that you wanted to make a bet with him to double up the purse. Is that something that you're still bringing up that you're interested in? Yeah, look, I mean, he, he didn't want to take that bet. I did, but I didn't want to let you fucking get the upper hand. At the time you said, I'm like, man, that sounds appetizing, but I just didn't want to let, I didn't want to let you just get that moment. Okay, so, so how about this? Let's make a new bet right now. I just let's bet make, I'm let's make a new ass. bet. If I beat you, you have to get I Love Jake Paul tattooed on you. <laughs> But, but if you beat me, I get I love Tyrone Woodley tattooed on me, and you have to post it on your Instagram feed. Deal or no deal? Put, are you confident or not? <laughs> what y'all think? Bro. Y'all think bro. I should do it? Bro, this guy, this guy has no fucking confidence. Bet. Deal or no deal? Deal. Can we, can we shake on it? 
There we go. <laughs> Folks, Deal. let me just say this. It's going down Sunday, August 29th in Cleveland, Ohio. It's live on Showtime pay-per-view, the main event, The Problem Child. Jake Paul taking on the chosen one, Tyron Woodley. Eight-round cruiserweight bout. The winner not only gets a victory, but <laughs> somebody's going to get tattooed. <laughs> I love the other guy on his body and putting it on the gram. And, of course, we get two other champions, Amanda Serrano taking on Yami Mercado. Uh, it's going to be a great night of fighting. Uh, fighters, let's face off. Let's start, start with the females first. Yami and Amanda, let's get you guys to face off. Let's get the belts. The Real Deal taking on Ayami Mercado. The WBC Super Bantamweight Champion of the World taking on the Unified. Featherweight Champion of the World and a woman who's won titles in seven different weight divisions. Mexico, Puerto Rico, August 29th on Showtime pay-per-view. And now to the main event. You got the former UFC welterweight champion, the chosen one, Tyron Woodley, taking on the unbeaten, the problem child, Jake Paul. It goes down in the Buckeye State of Ohio. Jake Paul's hometown, Cleveland, Ohio, Showtime pay-per-view. Tyron Woodley. A UFC champion making his boxing debut, taking on a man who's become a YouTube star and now pugilistic puncher. All four fighters, please. August 29th, Showtime pay-per-view from Cleveland, Ohio.